So I'm here today with Jamie Love, who is the director of KEI, Knowledge Ecology International, and uh, we're at the um, World Intellectual Property Organization Standing Committee on Copyright and Related Rights, and it's the 28th session. So Jamie, we have been here for a week, and uh, we've had a couple of discussions, one on broadcast, but I want to focus on the one on um, library exceptions and, limit exceptions and limitations to copyright for libraries and archives. And I wonder if you could tell us what your impressions of the discussions have been, and if you uh, think the agenda has moved forward uh, towards um, formally progressing on that topic towards an instrument. Well, coming into the media, there was a lot of anxiety. People uh, it looked like the European Union, and to some degree the United States, were trying to stop uh, discussions here that could lead to any kind of uh, norm setting or international agreement of any kind on uh, and limitations and exceptions for libraries. And, 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 it, and it was quite broad. I mean, they, they were not only arguing about whether or not there would be a treaty or not, but they were opposed to model laws, they were opposed to kind of text-based principles or just about anything. And uh, so we were we weren't sure what was going to happen this week. Uh, we expect the developing countries to push back, but we weren't sure what was going to happen from, uh, uh, primarily from the United States and Europe. Or how, how Group B as a, as a group would pull together with Canada and Australia and Japan and other countries. We don't know how, how this would play out. Um, I think Shira uh, Palmer from the United States, uh, 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 the head of the U.S. delegation, had uh, 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 worked with Nancy Weiss and other people had, had, in the area of libraries. Uh, thought they found a way to, to I don't know if it was, it was face saving or it was just diplomatic or whatever, but to, to, to create an environment where they can begin to have substantive discussions about this guy, about uh, things that were somewhat important. One of the criticisms by a lot of developing countries, and a number of the NGOs actually, is they thought that the U.S. proposal of discussing <laughs> principles and objectives was just too, uh, too weak. They thought it was just too, too general. It was kind of a distraction from anything that was quite meaningful. We were, we were a bit more, I think, open-minded about it. Maybe, maybe because we're a bit naive about trade negotiations, because uh, uh, some of the people that were more skeptical at it and, uh, are, are probably uh, more trade negotiators than, than we are, and they, they, they probably correctly perceive some of these uh, some of these tactics as as, as, as as something designed to stop work on issues, but uh, or just take up time. So, you know, I'm not sure if we got it right or not. But we thought it was we thought it wasn't bad. We thought that you, you, you get people in room, you start talking about uh, trying to explore uh, in areas. Uh, see if they understand what countries are doing, what the problems are, and whether or not there's any compelling need for some kind of global standards. And I think that I think the librarians have done a very good job in a very diff difficult situation. It's, it's a huge contrast between the way the committee treats the broadcasters and the libraries. The broadcasters come in here and uh, they can't really explain why they need something or what exactly they want to do. Proposals all over the map. The room's very divided. What needs to be done is a lot of opposition to it, but almost no delegate will come up there and say they're not for a diplomatic conference, the binding treaty. Nobody talks about a soft instrument. Nobody talks about principles and objectives. Nobody talks about mob laws. It's always about a treaty. When it gets to the library discussion, uh, there's no one uh, really from Group B is willing to use the treaty word or binding word, you know, from, or, or at least in the beginning they weren't. And, uh, and the conversation and, wasn't so divisive. And, 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 and even, and, yeah, well, and even model laws and things scare them, you know, so, or, or principles or whatever. So then, but you know, when you're here, I think, I think, uh, I think it's understood that that exceptions as it relates to, to libraries are, are part of the overall system. I think for the most part, I think that that they don't quite understand the end game. I don't think they quite understand what's. What they're supposed to do to it, and, and to what extent it will it, it will change it change the world if they do something. I mean, the, the broadcasters are asking for new rights, and a lot of the, some of the librarians are asking to set as a standard of rights that they already enjoy in their backyard. And other people are here because they feel their country has weak exceptions, and they want to use uh, the white vote norm setting process as a way of fixing that. Um, uh, the same kind of thing that the copyright owners do when they. They, they try and get you know everyone to go to uh, you know 
longer period of copyright or introduce some new right or something like that. So there's, there's this back and forth. But I think, uh, um, I won't try and belabor this too much for you, but uh, I think that uh, uh, what I thought, I thought interesting was that some countries like uh, Australia, I think, focused on the cross-border nature of some activities like preservation. And Canada said they'd like to, us to figure out if there are areas that there's enough consensus about they can think about a, uh, some kind of a standard without really getting into details of what that would look like. But I think that uh, 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 another thing that I don't think the member states have really talked enough about, that the librarians have focused on, and, and, and we're being aware of from the librarians, are the tremendous challenges facing libraries in terms of the pricing of works and the economic pressures they have. In our statement, we, we said that uh, there's a uh, a problem of each publisher being very aggressive in how they press the pricing and the restrictive conditions they put in contracts and the digital locks on the uses of works. And that what that has the effect of is, is making it look like libraries are a less attractive investment for governments because it, it, it's more expensive to get, uh, to get fewer, fewer works and fewer people can have access. And so I think the publishers are making a mistake. Uh, maybe individually it's rational for them, but the collective effect is to undermine the most important customer they have. As I understand it, libraries are right now making up about 70% of the global academic market and uh, purchasing worldwide in 2011 around $25 billion in, uh, in, in content. So I think that uh, it's big business and there's a lot riding on it for countries that want to develop uh, R&D infrastructure, national competitiveness, and educate your population. I wish the countries were approaching this uh, more enthusiastically and uh, particularly in Europe and the United States, because I think this is a quite an important public policy issue, is, is uh, what's, a, what's a future legal environment for libraries to function in? And I think they should be more willing to confront uh, the uh, obvious problem that the restrictions on access and the high prices are causing for libraries. So, Jamie, their vehicle, the vehicle that the United States used in their proposal, was effective in, did you think it was effective in bringing about the discussion and uh, involving member states in, in positioning uh, and discussing where the substantive issues that libraries are facing? I did. I thought that the United States found a way in their proposal to, uh, to uh, 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 overcome the objections from the European Union to having these conversations. Uh, I didn't like it when they kept jumping up and saying that uh, uh, they don't want to see any harmonization or anything. I don't think that was very helpful, and I thought that was really unnecessary. A little disappointed in some areas of what the United States did this week, but I thought that uh, 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 U.S. is a big government. We have a vice president who's very close to uh, uh, some publisher interest. We have, uh, we have a complicated political situation in the United States. We have the United States trade representative, which is kind of a hard liner on these issues. Uh, we have a patent office without a, a head of the patent office right now. A big, a big question mark as to who the head of the new patent office is going to be. So, uh, under the circumstances, I think it was impressive that the United States could be as, uh, show as much leadership as they did this week because uh, there could have been a, a lot of, uh, they could have had a lot of reasons to have taken a much lower profile. So they took some risks and uh, I don't think they got it the same way I would have got it, but, but in, the, in the big scale of things, uh, I would have to, I would have to say that uh, that uh, the Patent Office uh, 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 made a positive contribution this week and, and moved things forward. So what's your outlook, um, Jamie, for SCCR 29 vis-a-vis -vis the limitations and exceptions for copyright to copyright for libraries and archives? Well, I'd, I'd, like to see, uh, I'd like to see more NGOs come to this. I think a lot of people have pulled out of the WIPO discussions after, the, uh, after they started discussing the problems of affecting blind people. And uh, uh, it, it's challenged for people to find the money to come to Geneva to participate in these, in these discussions. But I think this is an important place to be. You have a lot of key people around the world that work on trade negotiations and copyright negotiations. This is a great place to, to talk to people and, uh, and also to meet with other other activist groups and things. I would hope that uh, you had some, you had like, a, you, know, you, had, you had some, you had TACD come in from Brussels. You had, uh, mm -hmm. you had uh, the Finnish electron, uh, group that works on uh, digital rights in, in Finland here. You had, uh, you had, uh, you had, you had uh, very good participation from the Third World Network and CIS India, for example. But I would, I would hope to sort of broaden that out a bit, and I would hope that 
I hope to see more of the American Library Associations in the next one. Okay. We'll look forward to that. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you. Is that okay? I think it went really well. Okay. I usually don't get uh, photographed in this thing because I'm usually the guy behind the camera. Thanks for letting me do it. No, it was, it was, uh, no, I it was a... No, I my game for interview. <laughs> It's not too bad, right? It's just not easy to carry a camera. You can buy, you can buy a pretty good camera for about $40 nowadays. Well, my camera does videos. I don't know if it would do such a long video, but I have a little uh, Probably. Leica. Yeah, well, and if it's a Leica, I'm sure it does fine videos. I'm trying to get this gentleman on the camera. I like him. He has kind of a, a good diatribe against the libraries, and I think they would be... Not against the libraries. The library is a wonderful institution. It should be encouraged. Have the best access as, as, as soon as possible. See, he's very articulate. He's got that. And then, and then just wait for the. He's got that posh British accent thing going. I, I'd like to. I'd like to get him on camera. <laughs> but he won't go on camera. Not yet. But it he, maybe he will. He is. He has a column to deliver. He has a, an author's deadline. Here goes author's.